I want to welcome everybody to the Unimpressed Podcast. I have comedian Red Squirrel on the what? Unimpressed Podcast, and I'm unimpressed that we haven't had her on the show yet. So what's going on, Squirrel? I know. I'm up here in Charleston, South Carolina, just having fun. How many layers did you put on this morning? Kiss my buttocks. Oh, <laughs> what? Can I, ca- can I cuss today? Uh, you, yeah, you a can say bit, whatever you, you want to do. You know, you always are asking me, what layer are you on? You know, you put a couple of layers on, and then you have to freshen up, you know, apply more lipstick. And, so probably about, you know, four layers. Four layers? I always say one layer, two layer, three layer, four. Now I'm ready to walk out the door. So, I hear you. You know, my dermatologist has told me to cut, you know, I don't need all of that makeup, but it's it's almost like a... A defense mechanism. It's like a like a safety kind of deal, I guess. Putting a safety putting, kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, like putting lots of. Why is that? What are you afraid I don't of? Know. I don't know. Did you have a? Did you have some a childhood <laughs> trauma? I mean, what happened? I'm a picker. I pick at my face. You know. Yeah. It's like if if there's something little something there, I will dig and dig and dig and dig until you know I've got a big old hole. And um, I love Doctor Pimple Popper. Oh my gosh, I love mm-hmm. watching that. And um, so I'm a, I'm a picker, so I've got, you know, like some little, don't look at me, I'm hideous, but I have these like scars and stuff. Look, you're like, you're looking now. I'm trying to find anyway, them. And so to you find can't them. find them because I, I got, find I got, got 80, the layers. I know. 85 layers. I know. On. So I think that makes me feel better <clears throat> trying to cover up. Yeah. Trying to cover up. Yeah, the, my, where I've peaked. The long line of females on your mother's side of the family. Where did you get this from? I mean, did you have any oh. traits of your past relatives? Oh, and I know I you talked know. about. I know you talked about your mother a little bit. No, no, my mother was not a picker. She was not. A, she did not let sun get to her face. Sunscreen. You know, when she died at seventy nine years old, she did not have wrinkles. She was absolutely beautiful. Now, my, my, my grandmother, her mama, Wheelie Hugh. Wheelie Hugh? <laughs> Wheelie, Wheelie Hugh. Hugh. Now, that's some country. That's, a, that's some southern that's, names that's right there. A, Wheelie Hugh. Wheelie Hugh. Hey, Hugh. Wheelie Hugh. There were three sisters. Uh-huh. There were three sisters, and it was Wheelie Hugh, Neva Lou, and Tula Bell. Now, who named these kids? My great-great-grandmother. I mean, country names are strange. Now, they were... This was in Alabama? This was in Sand Mountain in Albertville. Sand Mountain. In Albertville. You know, and it was so funny, John, because the other night there was a guy that, that posted under um, uh, one of my videos, and he said, her her accent is so fake. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah, come, come to Sand Mountain to Albertville and listen to the way people talk. This, this ain't fake at all. I mean, think about that. Where does that little sound come from? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Have you heard other females that sound like exactly like you yes. in your area? If you go to, and if you're from Albertville, you don't say Albertville, you say Artville. 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 Where are you from, Artville? Anybody that says Albertville uh-huh. is not from there. Because <laughs> if you're from there, it's Artville. I mean, Artville. it's con- I mean, country, just so... You know, interesting. I mean, Jody's from the mountain. She's from Sand Mountain, and but she don't sound like she don't have as much. Do we view. have? You don't think so? No, Jody don't have that squeaky. squeaky oh well, no, sound. that squeaky sound is just I don't know what. Huh? I don't know what that is. You know, being a comedian, right? Right. Comedians draw their comedy a lot of times from the darkest places. Right. But where do you think you draw your comedy from? Because I know your mother was somewhat of a character, right? She was a character. My dad was a character. I don't know. I've, I've just always tried to, you know, make people laugh. And uh, but I come from a funny family. Mm-hmm. Like if we have get-togethers and stuff, or if when we we you know had get-togethers with mother and daddy, and I mean we would just laugh. I mean like we're it's almost like we all have that comedy gene, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. You know, like my older brother John is hilarious. I mean, we'll put you on the floor laughing. You know. Um, so, I mean, we just kind of grew up with a lot of laughter. and now that's the same just, John I met in Cherokee? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. He didn't seem like that funny of a guy when I met him at the uh, show. Well, I think he was trying to probably be, you know, he was trying to be good. You got to get him in his element. Talking about your mother being a character mm-hmm. and some of the stories she would say to you about her and your father. Mm-hmm. Do you think you draw some of those stories from her? Yes. I mean... I mean, you can talk, talk yes. about, you know, what's some of the stories your mother used to say? Once she got MS, okay, mm-hmm. I think uh, illness kind of changes you. She didn't cuss that much. But once that MS and she started getting sicker, ooh, she would cuss. 
But um, I remember one day uh, she was going into the doctor's office, you know, and it was like, well, Wanda, you know, what you here for? And she was like, you know, I'm here to have my pussy checked. Yeah. And it was, they were like, oh, well, uh, uh, oh, okay. She was like, well, I guess you won't ask again. And uh, when Mother and Daddy were building their house, they lived in a trailer. We, yeah. we never lived in, in trailers. And uh, she said, John, there's just something about that trailer. Makes your daddy want to, you know. Yeah. And use that, you know. And I was yeah. like, Mother, you know, stop. You know, I don't want to hear that. You yeah. Know, makes your daddy just want to fuck. You know, and I was like, oh, my you know, she was just funny, even like yeah. without, you know, like trying to be funny. She was yeah. just, she was quite a lively character. Definitely. Well, I, you've done that character a few times. Yeah. With Darren and yeah. stuff. Well, you yeah. know, that's, Wanda. Why do we Wanda. forget about that character? We should do oh, Wanda. I don't know. Maybe Wanda, Wanda. wears that dress today. <laughs> is Wanda, Wanda, that's the accent for I the know, dress it today. It is. Wanda, I mean, she's just, you know. You know what I'm saying? And this, here's one for you. When JT was about 12 years old, she handed him. You know, they didn't do computer. Mm-hmm. You know, they were old school, didn't do didn't do computers. And so she handed uh, JT, 12 years old, a bunch of uh, paperwork about gonorrhea and syphilis and everything. She's like, now, JT, <laughs> better not be having sex because, you know, you stick that in. You know, you're going to get this right here, this gonorrhea, syphilitis, you know, herpes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and showing JT pictures of, you know, a penis with, you know, like, Stuff all and he yeah. was like, <laughs> "How old was JT? You know, Twelve. You know, it, it scarred him for life. You know? Really? <laughs> but my mother was like, JT. <laughs> so JT oh. turned out all right. Yeah, he did turn out right. <laughs> out all right. But oh my goodness, what, what, was, what did he say anything to you about that? He's still scarred. He's still worried about where he's going to stick his penis. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's going to get a herniated lapisidra sacrimonious, but a lot of syphilitis. I don't know. <laughs> Stimming, you know, that character of your mother, yeah. right? Where do you pull your jokes from? I mean, what, yeah, makes, you, what makes you think? Because a lot of your, you know, a lot of your, you know, when I have a conversation with you, it usually ends up in a sex conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, because it's funny. And if you're listening, it's not yeah. a, you know, it's just kind of a general anatomy thing. Well, I mean, somebody can you say know. a line and it's like, you know, somebody can, you know, say, what was it yesterday? Somebody said something about um, long and hot or something. <laughs> oh, talking about the 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 um pier yeah you know well that would be a you know that'd be long and hot you know and it was like hey you know <laughs> thinking yeah. of, you know sex so yeah. my mind just instantly goes there i don't know why I'm like i mean phil will be like johnny i mean do you ever you know can you ever not you know make a joke about sex and i'm like no i can't yeah that's kind of like so, jody's boyfriend we said where's big long i mean big yeah, mike yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like we just, um, so it, I don't know. It's just my personality. I don't, I don't. When you're thinking about putting these jokes together, how do you, in your head, structure these types of jokes? I don't know if I've heard, you know, your style per se on stage with anybody else or, you know, content wise. I mean, it's a little different. It is it's different. funny. It's different. It's funny, relatable um, to women. Yeah. I, you I, know, the women love you. You know, I was doing poetry for a little while and, and you know, songs and different things. I love to do that. I don't know. I guess my elementary education, you know, like teaching. I like to relate things that people can remember. I think that goes back to that teaching, you know. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, so somebody can remember something. You know, and I, I, I like to think when I'm writing that somebody can go home and go, oh, my gosh, baby, you know, your FUPA's, you know, showing or, you know, like, baby, let me grab a hold of that thing, you know. And they'll think of me, you know, yeah. and like what I said on stage, like, you know, things that are, are relatable. Cause I know that when I've seen other comics, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. And then if you can bring it up a couple of days later, I mean, they've made a hit, you know, I mean, yeah. they, they, they've they made a, you know, kind of a, you know, difference in my life. Cause it was like really funny. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're using it at home, walking around or, you know, joking around. I mean, uh, Phil and I went to see Frank Caliendo yeah. years ago. Yeah. And um, we still use his lines, you know, around the house, you know, look, Batman, here's a you know, letter from the Riddler. You know, yeah. we still use that line from Frank Caliendo. And, Lord, we went to see him about 20 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Is Caliendo, is he still alive? Yes. He is. Does he even do stand-up anymore? He does do a little bit of stand-up. 
yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And he is, you know, because he does all those voices. And Phil likes to do voices. And so he can do, you know, Frank Caliendo. But to me, um, that helps you remember the comic. And it, it's just something funny, kind of little, made a little difference in, in our lives. You know, a little funny, little line to remember. Before we connected... Right before you came on tour, right? I think it was it was uh, obviously me, Gary, Darren, and then uh, Rocky. Who Rocky, right? Mm-hmm. And then you came on board. Before you got involved with us, tell us a little bit about how long you've been doing comedy and what that was like. I've been doing comedy for about five years. Before you hooked started, up with us, yes, yes. And that was when did you hook up with us? Is this 2017 or 16? 16. Okay. So we've been five years. So, um, so yeah, I was doing comedy, but I was, you know, teaching. And so I would have to like do the weekend or, or nights, you know, the stardom, uh, Bruce Ayers used me a lot to head, uh, not headline to, um, host. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, I could just drive down there an hour away and host, you know, a couple of shows and head back and, you know, teach the next day. Um, it was funny, you know, trying to get out of that, you know, hosting, you know, the next morning, come on in, everybody sit down. About to start the show. <laughs> but, Were you in your 40s when you started comedy? Mm-hmm. You're in your 40s. What made you pull the plug to do comedy? Uh, full time? No, just, or just pull the plug, plug in plug. general. Like, I want to do this. What was your thought uh, The process? teachers talked me into it. Oh, okay. I mean, it was like, um, you know, because like I said, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I always acting crazy and, you know, goofy. And they were like, hey, you know, why don't you do open mic? Mm-hmm. The start home. Mm-hmm. And so I did it. I had five minutes. It was supposed to be clean. Yeah. So I did my set about hygiene. And what's the hygiene set? What's that? <laughs> it's not clean. It's not clean. <laughs> it's a clean subject, but it's yeah. not clean. I don't hear Tatiana. I, Is well, it I Tatiana? Ca- no. Did you do Tatiana anymore? I don't I do that anymore. That. Why not? I know. I don't have time. What do you mean you don't have time? You, John, you got to get me out there for <laughs> like an hour. I can do Tatiana. Uh the tapping yeah. and the spoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stirring and tucking. Don't do that anymore. So maybe I you have enough that. material now. Absolutely. Because 2018, you got to admit, I don't think you had enough material to headline when we put well, you out there. Well, um, I did Garrett. You know, I talked about Garrett on stage. Yeah. And that's kind of a touchy subject. People don't know whether to laugh or, you know, it's like that um, being politically correct and talking about your special needs son. Yeah. You know, it's like, do we laugh? What do we, you know... Yeah. What do we What do we do? So, um, so I did talk about Garrett, and that's kind of like I said, you know, as a big piece that you had big, to find something to yes, feel. Yes, yes. And raising a special needs child or uh, taking care of somebody that's disabled or you know a caretaker, you have to find laughter in it. Yeah. You know, and so the, and that's what I told the audience. But still, it's that touchy. You know, that's the world we live yeah. in. You know, they don't want. To, like, they if, don't want to call it what it is. I know, and if I can laugh about it, if I can laugh about you know Garrett, you uh, know, then yeah, I, I think I mean, yeah, y'all laugh on. I mean, we're not laughing at him. Yeah, we're not. We're not making fun of him. We're, you're laughing at the situation and the funniness. You know mm-hmm. that that funny things that Garrett does. You know, yeah, you can make fun of yourself. Yeah, you can make fun of your world within your life. I think. Mm-hmm. I think when you step over that boundary and start making fun of other mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. I think that's when mm-hmm. there's some well, that's, blurred lines, kind of. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and that's what I think, that people thought that maybe I was making fun of my child. Mm-hmm. And I'm like going, no, mm-hmm. you know, absolutely not. And I'm not making fun of, you know, special needs. Maybe that was you know? an escape for you, too, oh, to release. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, because I mean, you know, that, that definitely stress reliever. And until your own stage, I mean, I, I I know John, I know that you've kind of introduced us, and you've gotten up there and done some some announcements. Remember when I did the house announcements? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were like so dry. I mean, I know you've done that kind of stuff. I don't know if if you felt the high yeah. from the audience. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but um. But, you know, when you're up there and you are making other people laugh, yeah, that is a high you can't explain. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is truly like a drug. And that's why, you know, I tell the audience, you know, sometimes they, they're our therapy. Yeah. You know, they, that, that laughter, you know, because I was on stage um, in Talladega, you know, at the AIDB, um, the little AIBA. fundraiser. Yeah. Or not AIDB, but... Uh... 
the deaf school. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was there the night before my daddy died. I was performing. Yeah. You know, he was on hospice, and we knew that the time, you know, it could have been at any time. And, and I was like, I really I don't feel like I need to go. And Phil was like, you're going to go. For one thing, you know, your daddy would want you to be there, mm-hmm. you know, and, and make people laugh. And, you know, it's like, so the night before daddy died, I'm I'm performing on stage, and and. That was therapy for me, you know, because what a stressful time that was. And it was like I got to forget about my worries, you know, for a little while. You, you just can't describe it. You know? yeah. So what, once I was on stage that first time at the Stardome with the open mic competition, and I heard that laughter, I was like, yeah. I got you hooked. Yep, this is it. So you had five years prior to getting involved with us, and now you've had five years. When would mark your 10th year in comedy when you first this started? This is it. March was, was 10 years, yeah. This past March mm-hmm. was 10 mm-hmm. years. What was the difference between the first five years and now the, the five years with us? What's the, been the difference? John, <laughs> John, 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 John. First five years, you know, you ha- had to hustle and you had to do your, I mean, I had to do my own, you know, networking and everything, mm-hmm. you know, to get, you know, Bruce helped me some. I mean, you had to get out there and hustle for uh, places to perform I only did the southeast region, you know, because I didn't want to drive, you know, too far. Didn't have the money to fly, you mm-hmm. know. Um, would I remember going to uh, they, they, the Gump, Montgomery, mm-hmm. driving down there, two hours, performing for like 12 people. Uh, was leaving after the show was over, and the guy's like, sorry, we didn't make enough money for, you know, me to pay you. Yeah. And it was like. All righty then, yeah. Thank, thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Well, to his and his defense, if there was twelve people there, he probably did. not He probably didn't. Yeah. No, yeah. no. But you know, here's fifty dollars for gas. You know, I yeah, mean, something. you know, something. Uh, used to, you know, get paid just with food and drink at some of the clubs and stuff. Um, so that was my first five years. Yeah. <laughs> then, oh my goodness! Then here comes along Bang, you know, and and Darren was just like, you know. Oh my gosh, it just, you know, blown up. I mean, here we are, we're in limousines, you know, flying, uh, casinos here, we're getting presents here, you know, and this and that, and eating at the finest, you know, places and this, and it's like, you know, not doing the drive through at Burger King, you know. Um, I, oh my goodness, mm-hmm. it was just a whirlwind of, whoo. Yeah. Of, well, that's what amazingness. I'm saying. If anybody's out there listening, I make things look very pretty. Okay. Yes. I made things look very pretty, and I think we spoiled Darren a little bit. Oh my goodness! He don't Absolutely. know. He need, He doesn't he know that hustle yeah. of driving somewhere two hours, and you know, sorry, we can't pay you. You yeah. know that kind of thing. But um, you know, it's just that 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 comedy hustle of, like I said, lining up your own. Stuff. Didn't have to line up shows anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, my goodness. I mean, when. Came aboard, it was like, okay, here's our schedule. Doom, 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 you know. Yeah. I've traveled to places that I never would have gone to, you know. We've it's done, been, I, I think, I think it was maybe 400 shows, 450 shows yeah. or something. Yeah. Something like that. It's yeah, a lot so of shows. I mean, um, so my goodness, yeah. the blessings. I mean, if it ended today, I, I check that off my bucket list, the big old bucket list, and say, yeah. hey, this what? has been great. This has been great. Well, I think we're still going strong. I, I think, think we are too. Learning. I think, so, you know, so don't let, a new day. Don't let, don't let me go today, John. Huh? I'm wanting to continue. Yeah, we want to uh-huh. keep it going. You know, I think it's Absolutely. just, I think too, there's been a little bit of transition, you know, and trying to figure out landscape. And, you know, you look at an act like you and you're very, very funny on stage. And then you have the transitioning of, all right, how do we, you know, how do we build numbers? Like if you want to headline mm-hmm. and, you know, sell tickets. Right. You know, because... You know, the people who go on, you know, to your defense, in a way, the pe- even the people who go on the, the Tonight Show, mm-hmm. right? You know, I know people have been there three or four times. They can't sell 50 That's tickets. Right. That's true. You know, so I think there's a little bit of a landscape in figuring out, all right, if someone built a presence on social media that can translate the stage, mm-hmm. right? That's a perfect world, but a lot of people can't mm-hmm. translate the stage. Fortunately, Darren could translate the stage. Mm-hmm. So then you take a, an act like you who's very, very funny, right? And probably, you know, 15 years ago, you'd probably been on the Tonight Show, right? And been gone, you know? So now it's like, all right, how do you take this funny 
and build this over here mm -hmm. and, you know, recognize that in the modern day, right. you know, the modern right. day climate of the right. comedy world. Rate score is not for everybody. I've had to kind of get a little tough skin with comment, comments and things like that. But now, John, I mean, the, ooh, the, I mean, the times are, are, are changing. I mean, it's so hard with comedy now and not offending somebody some way, you know, somebody getting, you know, their feelings hurt, this and that, you know, canceled. I mean, it, it's just crazy. It's yeah. craziness. We've been going on shows and things. Um, it's like, well, what are you going to talk about? You know, yeah. you can't talk about this. You mm -hmm. know, you can't talk about that. For, I mean, could you imagine Richard Pryor, George yeah. Carlin? I mean, um, your big name, I, there's no way. Yeah. I don't think it's Hollywood's fault. I just think the corporations who fund Hollywood have kind of pigeonholed their business. I think creating a climate like we have, mm -hmm. where we have our own universe, mm -hmm. and the outside world doesn't really affect us the same way because we have our own situation. So right. in defense of Hollywood, I mean, I think, you know, if you got these people, these corporations writing these big checks, right, and, you know, these executives have to abide by that, what do you do? How many more things are the corporations going to take out of entertainment where it's not entertainment anymore? That's a good question. That's the million dollar question right there. You know what I mean? That's what it is. What I mean That's what it is. The corporations are taking, you know, directions. What do they call it? PC? You know, I, f I feel like that, that we have something different with our show. I mean, we're not a like the cookie cutter, you know, show. I mean, you know, it's like it's, you know, you got Gary, you got me, you got Darren. We're all different, but yet we're all like, you know, connected with, you know, I mean, we're not that different. I mean, is it going to become where entertainment is cookie cutter and dull and boring? Uh, well, I think I think there's going to be a resurgence of how entertainment started within a different media space, right? And I think that's what we're doing. You know, I think there's somewhat of a resurgence of how Hollywood used to be in our media space. Like, uh, I, when I say our media space, is it like having your own universe, having your own fans, servicing the, your own fans, you know, because well, it's a choice. Right. And we can put that choice out to those people. Right? Well, I think it's almost like um, when is that rebellious spirit going to come back? Like, you know, the screw you. You know, I mean, when's that pendulum going to yeah. go back to, you know. I don't I, know. I, I don't know. I don't know if it will be a mainstream. I don't know if it ever, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I mean, like I said, mainstream is having a tough time doing anything right now. I mean, it's just like when I talked to Heft the other day about, you know, they had Rob Schneider, mm -hmm. right, at the club mm -hmm. in Charlotte at the Comedy Zone. And he made a tweet about a mask or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was a firestorm for yeah. Rob Schneider. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rob Schneider's pretty, yeah, a pretty clean, kind of respected right. comedian. An actor. An actor in, yeah. in entertainment today. Absolutely. And no, Most and, everybody knows him. Yeah, and nobody's, you know, he wasn't protected. I don't think anybody's protected. So when is, I, I mean, I've got running through my mind that song, you know, we're not going to take it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we ain't going to take Maybe Mariana's it. generation, yeah. you know, maybe Mariana we're and JT's, you know. Because Mariana has a very uh, strong viewpoint, I think. JT yeah. does too. About how some kids are in the schools and, you know, mm -hmm. that she don't really agree with. Well, JT made a comment several years ago and he said, like, the, the minority is the majority now. It's almost like the way that the majority of people feel is being subdued and the minority is what's being heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, it's really strange. It's scary. It's scary times. It is scary time. That you, you know, um, who was it? Somebody like, was it Carrie Underwood? She actually just, I think, liked a post. Mm -hmm. And people were all over her about it. Yeah. You know, all over, you know, just, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, um, at what point can we be different and it be okay? I mean, we can think, 
that's what makes the world go round. I think that's a wonderful thing that well, I think, different. Yeah, I think, too, is more as this world of the social world continues to expand and get bigger and so forth. What is your goals the next five years? How much, how much longer do you want to do comedy? Oh, my goodness. I want to be like in my 70s and 80s, strolling my little walker and oxygen tank out on the stage and dropping it like it's hot. I mean, no, like, you know, not, yeah. just throwing my boobs up over my walker and, you know, heading on out. I, you know, I want my Corvette and, you know, you know. Yeah. So. Jeff Allen, he's had a pretty good career, right? He's been around a long time. I don't know. That's who popped in my mind. You know, uh, yeah. he's in the same camp as uh, James Gregory. Yes. And James Gregory's had been around a long oh time, Oh, my too. goodness. Yes. Yeah. Sells out shows all over. You know, yeah. Just, um, yeah, he's definitely a favorite. So, so yeah, I want to I want to keep on doing it as long as I, as long as I can. Because, um, like I said, I mean, to me, you're only as old as you, as your mind say it. And I still feel like I'm in my twenties. Yeah. Um, now, you know, yesterday when I tried to do that uh, cartwheel, you know, it, it didn't work out real good. But, you know, hey. So, talking about your family, mm-hmm. two sons. Yes. Right? And you talked about Garrett a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. JT. We know JT. Mm-hmm. Raising Garrett, what was mm-hmm. that like? And what was it like when you first found out? About his issues. Right. Did you know immediately when he was born he was going to have issues or? Well, um, you know, with, with my pregnancy with Garrett, I started going into labor at 20 weeks. Okay. Okay. And um, so they put me on medication. Um, I didn't do bed rest, but they brought a, a recliner into my classroom. <laughs> gotcha. And so I had a recliner in my classroom and I, I still taught. And um, I continued to have issues, you know, throughout my pregnancy. And I wound up having him two months early. And so when he was born, you know, they they talked about swelling at the base of his neck, and that could be mental retardation and different things. And um, but with him being a preemie, you contributed all of his delays to being premature. You know, well, he's yeah. just he's you know just delayed. And then at a year old, they did an MRI, and he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy because they could see the, you know, the brain damage, and um. Oh, my gosh, I thought my life was over. You know, you have this certain dream of, you know, um, oh, he's going to be a little baseball player, a little football player, you know, a little, you know, this and that. You know, you have your little dreams and all that, and, and it's like, wow, this is a, this is a different road mm-hmm. that we're going to be going down. So then, you know, you start, you know, carrying him to therapy, and um, up until three, you know, I carried him to therapy, and then at three, we had the early intervention program at our school, so mm-hmm. I started, you know, I got to bring him to my school. It's kind of bittersweet, I guess, you know, like. Um, now, that was a different, Phil's not Garrett's father? No, okay. no. Do you think no. that puts strain on that relationship? Who, Phil and I? No, no, put strain on that. You're like the oh, father, Garrett's yes. father, you and Garrett. Yes, well, Todd, um, my my first husband, uh, was coach and, you know, coach football, baseball, basketball, everything, you know, and he was going a lot. And I almost feel like that um, that was a that was his way of coping was being gone. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't need somebody gone. I needed somebody there for me. Mm-hmm. You know, like as my emotional, you know, stability. Yeah. So then Phil comes on the scene. Phil comes swooping in. He comes no, swooping he in. Came and, swooping and how in. did you know? You got to respect Phil for oh taking on that responsibility of Garrett, right? Absolutely. That's a big deal. Yeah. Because, you know, um, you're talking about a lifelong commitment to feeding, you know, brushing teeth, wiping his butt, changing diapers, you know, um, doing everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, because Garrett is not independent at all. You know, he'll yeah. have to have full-time care for the rest of his life. And, yeah, that's a major thing for a man to step up and, you know, and take that. on that responsibility. And then... Yeah. You and Phil have JT. Yes. All right. And then tell us a little bit about JT. Yeah, JT's 19, and he has joined the Army. Mm -hmm. And he's leaving October the 3rd for Fort Jackson right here in South Carolina. And um, he'll be going eight months. In a Mm -hmm. music program Mm -hmm. with the Marines? No, no, no. no, music program. What is it, Army, or Um, what is that? I don't know if he'll do – I don't know if he'll do that or not. He's kind of gotten out of music a little bit. Oh, he has? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So he's just a soldier now. 
Yes, he's going to be airborne. Airborne. Mm -hmm. So he wants to fly. Mm -hmm. Oh, he doesn't want to fly. He wants to jump out of planes. He wants to jump out of planes. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. And what is the purpose of him jumping out of planes? I guess going to where the bad people are or whatever, helping, I don't know. And does he want to be Um, a career military Yes, he does. He does. He does. And it's so funny because Phil was, you know, Marine at 17 Mm -hmm. and then law enforcement. Growing up, he always told JT, no military, no law enforcement. Yeah. Don't do military, don't do law enforcement. Yeah. And now he's doing what? And now he's doing doing military. So, um, but, you know, he was accepted to the University of Alabama because we, we were always been college, 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 you know, because we're both college graduates, and it was college, you know, schooling's important. JT was like, I don't, I don't want to go to school, you know, I don't, I don't want to go. To, he's like, all I would do would be go down there and party. Mm-hmm. So he saved us a lot of money. And so we're talking a little bit about Phil, you said Marine. How long was Phil a cop? And he was a oh, sergeant. Twenty six years. He was assistant chief of police in Southside. Yeah. Oh, assistant chief of police in Southside. Yeah. You know, remember when Phil pulled me over? Yes. Going through town. I saw yes. this guy racing up yes. behind me. I was like, who the hell is that? Yeah. You were in your rental car. Yeah. 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 He followed me. All oh, he town. thought that was the funniest thing. He was like, John's going to be, because you timed it from Darren's house. Yeah. And he was like, he should be headed through Southside about, right? Yeah. yeah. Pulled you over. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. So now Phil is a uh, lawyer. He's a lawyer. Lawyer yeah. now, and now he's starting his own practice. Own practice, yes. Philip J. Robertson. Philip J. Robertson Law Firm. Yes, okay. attorney at law. Yes, attorney at yes, law. Yes, yes. That's cool. Mm-hmm. It is cool. It's exciting getting his pilot's license. Yeah, he was talking to me about that. Yeah, we're going. to just fly us around, fly us to different places. That'd be cool. I know. Just make sure how old of a plane he's going to get. <laughs> Well, you know, the newer ones are a little more expensive. Yeah. You know, you can get a 1960 something, you know, and it's like pretty cheap. But yeah. 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 You know, the, the newer ones. Yeah. Yeah. But when's that post? When does he get his pilot license? I don't know. He's, you know, he's got to have 40 hours of flight, you know, training, and then he's got to have his schooling, and then, I don't know. You know, he's got this cancer. <laughs> He's got this he's cancer de- thing. He's got this cancer thing, thing that he's dealing with. Phil, you got to you know, get rid of the cancer I gotta thing. I got to get rid of the cancer thing. You know, the, the weakened heart from the chemo, you know. Yeah. He's got a few little things things going on. But, yeah. um, Does yeah. he stop doing the chemo? Yes. Yes, because of, you know, his, his weakened heart muscle. Yeah. And how's that going? It's getting better. It's getting better. That chemo's some bad. Is he eating right? Bad shit. Yes, he. I, I told you he's like cut out. Uh, carbonated drinks, and um, he's uh, we've quit going out to eat, and so I'm trying to you know cook. Did you cook, and do, squirrel? I, co- I cook. Now I could go se- the southern way. Uh, you know, I'm going to add a glob of butter to that, that those, of those butter. green those green beans. You know, you cook every night. Yeah, really. And let me tell you, we bought an air fryer. Fabulous, best invention ever. If you want to follow Red Squirrel, we got what? Facebook, Comedian Red Squirrel. Mm-hmm. We got Instagram, Comedian Red Squirrel. Red, yeah. Is it Comedian Red Squirrel? Yes. So check those out. Those are probably our two biggest platforms. Yeah. All right. Um, and I, I have just started the Tic Tac. Tic Tac. The Tic Tac. <laughs> the Tic Tac. I just tic-tac. started it. Yeah. We got to start tagging you. Yeah, I think I have like um of my own personal ones. Um, I think I have like six little videos up. Um, I like to do videos of my little doggies, and um, yeah, but I love. And I was going to tell you too. You should all the stuff you put on your personal page. Mm-hmm. You should treat that. Do the same thing on your fan page, or like just make your fan page your personal page. Do like all your personal shit. You should just post everything on your fan page. Your life, because you like to post. Why not? I know. Do they want to know all about my? Yeah, I think the more relatable they can be, why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've really, really enjoyed um talking, you know, because a lot of people didn't don't know about Garrett, and um, and so I've really enjoyed you know getting messages and stuff uh from other parents, mm-hmm. you know about you know their experience with raising a special needs 
child. Um, it was funny because on Instagram, a lady sent me a message tell me about life vac. Mm-hmm. You know, after Garrett's choking spell, I wound up ordering two of them, one you know for Garrett's house and one for you know our house when he comes home to visit. But it's actually it's it keeps you from like choking. It's like a like an apparatus you put over your mouth and you push it down and no air goes down into your you know the esophagus but when you pull up everything sucks like everything sucks out interesting and so she sent that to me on instagram and she was like i, I just thought of you you know with garrett's story i wanted you to know about this i, I ordered it immediately and i you know thanked her so it is you know it's kind of neat you know that people have watched the you know darren and i's podcast and mm-hmm. If, you know, we'll have to make this me. a segment. Well, the whole, the whole, the whole deal will be out there too. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. And that that stemmed from you being on Darren's podcast. Yes, yes. I'm talking about yeah, the choking episode. So um, so yeah. So I have to do that. Well, what do you think you would ever write a book or anything like that? I would love to write a book. I would love to do a children's book. What would the children's book be? I was thinking about um, Snowball. The albino guinea pig. Do what? Snowball the albino guinea pig. The albino guinea pig. That's, Is it supposed to be funny? That's, yeah, that's one of my titles. Oh, okay. Oh, little snowball. I used to have a guinea pig when I taught third grade. I had a guinea pig named um, Wool E. Booger. Wooly Booger. Wooly Booger. I remember we, that name. In yeah, the we South. had uh, we had him for four years in my classroom. I would have a, one of my students take him home for the summer and keep him. And bring him back the next year. Yeah. Wooly oh. Booger lived four years. And it was so funny because uh, with Wooly Booger, I would get him out after lunch and feed him like lettuce and stuff. And I would let him sit on one of my students' uh, desks that had been real good for that day. And Wooly Booger would uh, gnaw on their paper. So I always knew when I was grading papers who who had Wooly Booger because he, he'd gnawed on their nice. paper. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well... If you want to see Red Squirrel on stage, yeah. she may be doing some shows by herself soon. We're going to, you know, build those numbers, sell some tickets. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Share Red you know. Squirrel's page. We've got a bunch of shows coming up. And uh, yeah. follow her on Facebook, follow her on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is comedian Red Squirrel. This has been your Unimpressed Podcast. And I'm John Edmonds Cosma, the CEO of Bang Productions. Thanks for coming on, Squirrel. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Are you impressed now? I'm impressed Are now. You impressed? I went from unimpressed to impressed. Yay! Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Mwah. Mwah.